What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how we can create reports from our SketchUp models to do things like figuring out how many doors, how many pieces of furniture we have, other things like that. So if you do wanna get more in depth on creating these kind of reports for SketchUp and layout, make sure you check out the SketchUp Essentials course at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so SketchUp actually has a built-in function for reporting out objects that we're going to check out in this video. And so you can find it by going up to File, Generate Report right here. And when you do that, it's going to pop up a window that looks like this. And over here, what this is going to do is this is going to give us the ability to create different reports by clicking on the Create New Template button right here. And so in general, what this is going to do is this is going to give us a big long list of things that we can add to our report. Now, most of these I don't usually use, like there's a lot of dynamic things that you can report out um, based on some of the components I have in here. Generally speaking, I really keep it in the model attributes that are up here at the top um, through maybe like the quantity. But let's go ahead and let's create a simple report. And so remember that objects in SketchUp are basically defined as either grouped objects or components in here. And you can see those in your outliner drop down right here to give you kind of an idea of what's in your model. But in this situation, let's say we wanted to create something really simple that just has the entity name, the definition name, and then the quantity. So notice how I can just drag these in here like this. You, you can click on the left or right here to add things or remove things as well. So if I drag quantity back in here like this, now there's an option here to run a report. And so when I do that, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna report out every single object that's in my SketchUp model. And since I have some dynamic components in here with a lot of parts and pieces, you can see how this is a lot of information that we don't necessarily want to sort through. Now you could make it a little easier by clicking on the entity name right here. But again, I don't necessarily want this to report out this level of detail. So what we can do is we can control the level of detail um, both by clicking on the selection option as well as the component nesting levels. And so what the component nesting levels means is remember that you can have components inside of components like this, right? So nesting level one would be just an object that lives in the SketchUp model. So if I was to type in a value of one, so check this box right here and click on one and then run the report, this report is going to just tell me that I have a model. So not necessarily super helpful. But if I change this to a nesting level of two and then run this, notice how this report is going to look a lot like my outliner right here, right? Because these are basically inside of the overall model. So they're nested not at level one, but at level two. Now, if I was to go to level three, notice how I'm going to get a completely different level of detail in here. That's because it's going to find everything that's at a level inside of the level right here. So notice how if I look in here, all of these different things that are nested um, at the third level, so model, first component, second component are now showing up in here, like all of these corners from the flex windows that I have in here, other things like that. So we're gonna use these levels to control what's going to show up in our model like this. And so you can probably tell by looking at this that the way that you group your model if you're going to be creating reports is going to be really important. Like for example, I've got different groups of objects in here from the 3D warehouse, right? And some of them are at level two, like these chairs right here are at level two, but these are in an additional group Right, I have to look inside of this and then actually a group inside of that group before you actually get to the furniture itself. So the problem is I can't really run a report that's going to accurately give me the number of tables and chairs that are in here because of the way that this is grouped. So what I would want to do in a situation like this is I would want to have this kind of grouped where these objects are all at the same level. So in this situation, for example, what I might want is I might want all of my chairs to be in a group. So I'm gonna create a group. I'm gonna call this chairs right here. And what I want is I want all of the chairs in the model to be at that same level. 
So in this situation, I don't want these to be in these groups over here. If I want them to report out properly, I want them to be in a chairs group like this. So now if I collapse this, notice how I have a group for chairs and all of my chairs are at this level. So they would all be at level three. So now if I run a report, right? So I'm gonna generate a report. I'm gonna create a new template and I'm gonna call it or I'm gonna say that it's gonna to go to a level of three, and I'm gonna say that it's going to have the definition name, the entity name, and the quantity. Whoops, like this, and I'm gonna run that report. Well, notice how now, it's still not giving me exactly what I want, but I can see that down below here, it's giving me the number of furniture, the amount of furniture that's in here, right? It's giving me a count of each one of these chairs that are in here. And so what we don't want though is we don't want all this stuff that's showing up from our flex tools objects that are in here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to change this so that it's only gonna report our current selection. And when I do that, I can select this group right here and I'm gonna run the report. But this is gonna give me a problem because now my component nesting level has changed. Because relative to this group, these are only nested to a level of two not a level of three. So it's reporting too far into these objects right here. So all I would do is I would just change my component nesting levels to two and I would run the report like this. And so what it's doing is it's giving me all objects nested at the second level of the object I have selected right here. Now, note that when we do this, this is currently giving me a list of individual objects and a quantity of one, which is fine if that's what you want, no big deal. Um, but if you want something different, like if you want this to total these, what we wanna do is we wanna change our group by. And in this case, because all of our chair groups or our chair components have been set up with the same definition, what I can do is I can group these by definition name right here because they all have the same definition name. Now, if I run that report, it's going to group the objects in here by definition name. Well now, notice how I'm getting a report that totals these up based on their definition name right here. And so what you can do is you can set this up where it's going to um, give us totals in here rather than individual objects. And you can just do that by setting a group by like this. All right, so let's say that we wanted to pick up our tables as well as our chairs. So there's a couple different ways that we could do this. So the first is we could take all of these tables, right? And I'm gonna put them all in a group like this. We're gonna right click, we're gonna make these a group. We'll notice how over here in your outliner, this now gives us a group which we can rename to tables right here. So if we wanted to, we could just do a control click across our chairs and our tables. So now we've got both groups selected, but then I can run a report like this and notice how that report is going to give me a count. Notice how a couple of these tables are just labeled component. This is why it's important for you to actually pay attention to what you're naming things when they're grouped. Like these components, the definition name is just component, which is not very helpful. So what I might do is I might go up into the entity info for those objects and I'm gonna change the component definition to T-shaped tables like this. I'll tag back out of this. Notice how that definition name got changed right here in my tables group. So now I could select both of these. I could run that report. And one thing you're gonna notice, I'm gonna have to recreate this. So the reason I'm having to recreate this is because I didn't actually save what I had in here. So um, that's something that you should probably pay attention to is you should probably pay attention to um, saving reports so that you don't have to rerun them again. But notice how I recreated that report. And now I can see that these objects are in here with the correct name because we changed the component definition over here. And so in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this and I'm just gonna call this a level two selection report. And I might say like doors or maybe something like this. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna click on the option to save to model. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna save this report to this model file right here. However, 
That doesn't mean that that report is something that's being saved in all model files. So if you wanted to bring this into another SketchUp file, you could just run an export and I could save that. And then I could import that GRT file, which is gonna be the report definition file into another SketchUp file if I wanted to do that. And then you can always click in here and edit that if you wanna make changes. Now, one thing that we didn't really talk about and we probably should is let's talk about component definition versus entity name. And so I've currently got three windows in this model. And so if you look at this right now, these windows are all just called sliding window one, which is fine, but usually you want your doors and windows to have some kind of a name associated with them. Well, right now, if I run this report and I'm just going to just run a high level report really quick. So we'll just create a new one. So create a new template and we'll group by nothing right now. We'll bring our entity name in here and we'll bring our quantity in here. Well, if I run this report, notice how it's gonna give you this big old list right here. We wanna set our component nesting levels to two, like this, and then it'll pick up this list. Well, the problem is these windows right now all have the same definition name, but they don't have an entity name. Well, I wanna go back in and I wanna rename these so that they each have their own custom name. Like if I was creating a door schedule or something like that. And so what I wanna do is for each one of these windows, I wanna select them and I wanna give them an instance name. So in this case, I might call this W1. Well, notice how this maintains the same component definition because they're all referencing that same component definition so that if you change one, the others change as well. But each one of them, I want them to have an individual designation, which is going to be the instance name. So in this situation, I can take the third window, call it W3. And what I might do is I might put these in a group and just call it windows. So I'm just going to put a group right here. Oh, you can't do that because those are flex tools components. That's right. And it breaks the wall cutter functionality. So um, you could probably finalize that using some tools, but we're not going to get way into that right now. What I want to do right now is I want to go back into my report. And now if I run that report, Notice how my entity name is going to show up in here. And we can go back and we can adjust this so that the entity name shows up first. So I'm gonna drag that to the top. Notice how now it's gonna put the entity name first and the definition name second, like this. We don't really have a lot of advanced options in here for filtering right now. So I can't tell this to just filter by a tag and only show like my window tag stuff or anything like that. That would be a cool function to have. And so a lot of the time what I'll do if I have to do something like this, right? If I have a special situation like these flex windows is I'll just run the report, I'll export it to something like Excel, and then I'll just uh, cut out the stuff that I don't need. But let's say that we wanted to bring this report in. And so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna run my first report, which was my selection report for my tables and chairs. And I'm just gonna select my tables and chairs, run this report like this. This is gonna give me this option. And let's say within this report, we didn't want this to group by definition name. Let's say we wanted this to give us every single definition like this, just so that we have a longer list. So what you can do now is you can click on this option for download. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna let you save this as a file. And so it's gonna say it was saved successfully. If I say yes to open it now, what it's gonna do is it's gonna open it up in your spreadsheet program. And so basically what this has done is this has saved this as a comma delimited file right here. Well, then I can open it up inside of Excel and then I can make adjustments if I want to do that. So I can come in here and add rows. I can add columns, whatever I want to do. Um, this is now just data that I can work with inside of Excel. So if you want to export this, you can do that using that download function. Now, one other thing is you can also bring this into layout and so we'll just pick a document type. It doesn't matter. Um, so layout can bring in tables. So what I can do is I can do a file insert. I can go find that report that I just created like this, and this is going to bring that into layout as a table right here. So you can see how I now have a table in here that I can edit 
we're going to adjust. This is how we're going to create things like our door schedules is by adjusting these and creating these using a CSV file. And so this is going to work a lot the same way that referencing viewports work. When you bring in viewports, this is basically just a reference to this Excel file. So say I was to come in here and make a change. So I'm going to add a row at the top right here. We'll go ahead and merge and center and we'll call this furniture schedule like this. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click on save in my Excel file. Well, what you're gonna notice is that does not adjust automatically in layout. However, you can right click on it and you can click on the option to update table reference right here. And what that's going to do is that's gonna update this and bring it in. Now, one thing about this is because this is a CSV format, it's only bringing in the data. It's not actually bringing in the um, merged cell right here. So you might want to do a file save as, save this as an Excel workbook like this. And then I'm just going to re-reference this. So I might go into my document setup under my references, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to relink it to the Excel version instead of the comma separated value file like this. And now notice how this brought this in and it included this row right here, which is a merged cell. So you can use this to update data and bring it into layout um, once you export these reports from SketchUp. All right, so that's kind of an overview of how the reports work. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. If you want to learn more about how to use these to create plans, make sure you check out the SketchUp Essentials course. I will link to that on this page. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.